Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to cover how to do a round system where you have a main game time and also an intermission. So once the remaining time runs out, we'll go back to the main lobby and we'll have a short intermission. Okay, so now we're back in the lobby with a short intermission. Once this timer expires, then we'll be back in the main game. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so before we get started with the scripts, there's a few things we need to do first. The first thing we need to do is set up a lobby, and it doesn't have to be anything fancy. The only important part for this lobby is that we have some part inside of it called lobby, and this is gonna be where we're gonna be teleporting the players to. So you can make your lobby look however you want to, just make sure you have some part in there called lobby. I used a spawn part, but a regular part would work fine too. And then we're gonna need another part somewhere in the game, so that when the intermission ends, we're going to teleport the players to this part. So as far as the setup goes, you're just going to need one part inside the obby and one part inside of the main game. For the part that you put inside the game, just go and rename that one to main. After that, we can start working on our label up here. So that's going to be under starter GUI. You're going to insert a screen GUI. Inside of that, you're going to put a text label, and then you can modify that text label to look however you want to. You can set the text to whatever you want to while you're getting it set up, because we're actually going to be changing the value of that inside of a script. Okay, so once you have that all set up, we're going to be writing a script inside of the server script service. The first thing we're going to do is make variables to store the lobby location, which is going to be this part right here. And then we're going to make another one to store this location right here. To do that, we're going to start by saying local. And then we'll call this one lobby location. And this is going to be equal to game dot workspace. And then the name of the part is lobby. So we're going to put dot lobby. And then we're going to get its position by saying dot position. And then we're going to add a small vector to this so that the player doesn't spawn inside of the part. So we're going to say plus and then vector three dot new. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to put zero, comma three, comma zero. Okay, we're going to do another one for the other part. So this other part is the one that's going to be inside the game. So for that one, let's say local. The name of this one is going to be game location. And that's going to be equal to game dot workspace dot the name of this one is main. And then we're going to say dot position. And then we're going to add the same vector to it. We're going to be using remote events to send the time to all the players in the game. So under replicated storage, go ahead and add a remote event and rename that to time event. Back here in the script, we're going to say local replicated storage. And that's going to be equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put replicated storage. And then we're going to make a variable for the remote event. So we'll say local time event. And this is going to be equal to replicated storage. We're going to say colon wait for child. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put the name of the remote event, which is time event. After that, we're going to be making a couple functions. The first one, we're going to say local function. The name of this function is going to be play game. Inside here, we're going to say local time amount. And we're going to set this equal to whatever time you want for your main game. So just for testing purposes, I'm going to choose 10. After that, I'm going to say local and then timer text. And this is going to be equal to whatever message you want to put in front of the number. So in my case, I'm just going to say remaining time. So you could put something like match time, time left, or whatever else you want to. But this is the part that's going to display to the left of the number. After that, we're going to say while time amount is greater than zero. What we're going to do is send the time amount to all the players in the game. And then what we'll do later on is on a local script, we'll take that amount and display it on the label. So for now, we're going to say time event. And this is the variable for the remote event that we created up here. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to say colon fire all clients. And then what we're going to send to the players is time amount. And then we're also going to send the message, which we stored in timer text. Okay, after that, we're going to wait for one second. And then we're going to subtract one from the time amount. To do that, we're going to say time amount 
and then minus equals one. Okay, so that'll cover the main game timer. We're also gonna create one for the intermission. So we'll say local function. The name of this function is gonna be play intermission. Okay, just like the other one, we're gonna start with a time value. So we'll say local. This time we're gonna call it intermission. And you can also set this to whatever you want to. I'm gonna choose five just to keep it short. And then we'll choose some text to display in front of the number. So we'll say local, and then we can use the same variable name, timer text. And this time we're gonna set that equal to intermission. And you'll notice that I put an extra space here and also here, and that just gives a space between the word and the number. If you do it without the space, the number will be right next to the colon, but I think it just looks a little bit better to have that extra space. After that, we're gonna use another loop. So we're gonna say while, this time it's gonna be intermission, while that is greater than zero. What we're gonna do is basically the same as what we did up here. This time though, instead of sending time amount, we're going to send intermission. And then here, we're also gonna change it to intermission. Next, we're gonna create a function that'll teleport all the players in the game back to the lobby. So we'll say local function. The name of this function is gonna be reset players. Okay, what we're gonna do in this function is we're gonna say for underscore comma, and then we're gonna do a shorthand for player. We're gonna say PLR, and then we're gonna say in pairs. Inside the parentheses, we're gonna say game dot players, and then colon get children. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna get all the players in the game that we can loop through. And then for each player in the player list, what we're gonna do is say player dot character. And then we're gonna say dot humanoid root part. After that, we're gonna say dot C frame. And we're gonna set that equal to C frame dot new. And then the position is gonna be lobby location. So that's the variable that we created up here. And what we're doing inside that variable is just storing the location of this part right here. Okay, and then we're gonna create one final function. So I'm just gonna copy this one and paste it down below. And this time, instead of lobby location, it's going to be game location. After that, we're gonna create a loop that'll run these functions. So we're gonna say while true do. The first thing we wanna do is reset players. So that'll bring them into the lobby. Then what we're gonna do is say play intermission. After we finish the intermission, we're going to teleport the players. And I forgot to change the name over here. So here, instead of reset, we're gonna say teleport. Okay, so after the intermission, we're going to teleport the players. After we teleport the players into the game, we're gonna start the timer. And we're gonna do that by saying play game and then parentheses. Okay, so this is our reset function, which we defined right here. So that's gonna teleport all the players to the lobby. After that, we're gonna run this function, which is going to play the intermission timer. After we teleport them, then we're gonna run the main timer, which is this one up here. And then after that last one finishes, it's gonna go back to the top. And then on the local side, we just need to take the time that was sent out and display that on the label. On the local script inside of the text label, we're gonna start by saying local label, and this is equal to script dot parent. And then we're gonna be using that remote event, so let's grab the lines from the script. So we can just copy these two right here. After that, we're gonna say time event. And then we're gonna say dot on client event. And then we're gonna say colon connect. We're gonna connect this with a function. This function is gonna take in two different things. It's gonna take in time amount. And then it's also gonna take in some text that we called timer text. These two values are coming from the other script. So they come from this part right here and also this part right here. And it doesn't matter that we call this variable a different name. It'll all work the same on the local script. Okay, so what we wanna do when we receive those two values is we're gonna say label dot text. And what we're gonna set that equal to is first we're gonna put the timer text and I need to fix that. It should be timer text, so let's add the R back in. Okay, so that'll be the message in front of the number. So that's either going to be remaining time or intermission. 
and then we're going to join that with the actual number value, and that's being stored in time amount. All right, so let's go and run the game and make sure everything's working. Okay, we have our intermission, and then we go to the main game. After the time is up, we should go back to the lobby. Okay, so we're back in the lobby with our intermission. And then after the intermission, we'll go back to the main game. All right, so it looks like everything's working. So let me show you a few things that you can adjust on the script. On the server side, you can adjust the amount of time. So this will be the amount of time for the main game. And this will be the time for the intermission. And like I mentioned before, you can change the text that appears to the left of the number. You can do that here and also for the intermission. Okay, and I know there's probably some other variations of this that you would like to see. So if there's a different version of this that you want me to do a video on, just let me know in the comment section. For now, though, I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.